So there's so many different whiskies out there at the moment from so many different distilleries and there's so many different whiskey types. So how do we understand them? And how do we understand the whiskey label? How do we get through all the jargon when we're just trying to pick a whiskey and tell the differences between them when we're at the whiskey shop? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So grab a dram, grab a seat, and let So welcome first Phil, I'm Phil and I'm going to fill you in about whiskey. So today we're talking about whiskey labels and how we can understand them, how we can read them so you know exactly what you're getting when you go down to that whiskey store and you can buy a nice whiskey like this one, Aaron 18, it's pretty fantastic, absolutely gorgeous dram so let's just uh, pour a little dram. Oh beautiful. The first thing is the brand. You might recognize some of the brands, like you might have seen a Lafroy before, you might have seen a Lagavulin before. Those are the brands, and generally with single malt, it's the name of the distillery, where it's from. Within that brand, it'd be quite a cohesive flavor. Um, you'll kind of know, especially from like a Lafroy. So that salty, iodine, kind of seaweed flavor that you get is all matured here. It's smoky, it's medicinal and generally most of the different types will be quite similar. So the next word you'll see on a whiskey label is the word single, which is quite common. And single just means that it's from a single distillery. It's a bit like with vineyard, it will come from a single place, a unique place. And I've also done a video as well about what is single malt, go watch that if the link's there. But then you'll often see uh, big brand whiskies which are blended, and these won't have the word single because they're not from a single distillery. Their whiskey comes from a whole bunch of different distilleries and they mix it together in a blend. And that's where you get whiskies like the Ballantines 12. So the next word is malt. And malt generally means it comes from malted barley, another thing I talk about in my single malt video that you can go watch. So if you don't see the word malt, um, especially in say Irish whiskies and stuff, generally, or if it says, sometimes it will say the word grain, and that will mean that it might come from a mix of grains or maybe a different type of grain. Um, but generally with the word malt, you can kind of think that's from barley. So the next words are Scotch whiskey. And there's a couple of things we can learn from this. The word Scotch. The word Scotch just means it's whiskey from Scotland. If the whiskey's made somewhere else in the world, it can't be called Scotch. There'd be often bottles that don't have the word Scotch. An example of this is Irish whiskey, like the Green Spot. Now the Green Spot says, single pot still Irish whiskey. So Irish whiskey just means, obviously, it's whiskey from Ireland. The next word is whiskey. Generally, there's two ways you can spell whiskey. There's whiskey, and there's whiskey with an E. And overall, to generalize, the US and Ireland spell it with an E, and there's some exceptions to that, and the rest of the world won't spell it with the E. There's a whole backstory to all this, and I'll just say again, go watch my video on whiskey versus whiskey. I've dedicated a whole video to that topic, and it's really interesting. It talks about differences between world whiskies and all that sort of thing. We can go a little bit deeper into that. So the next one is the age statement. And this is common with a lot of single malts. You've got the age 10. Uh, this Lagerverlin has eight. Uh, this Aaron, 18. Uh, and basically what that means is how long the whiskey has been aged in the cask. But it's not all the whiskey in there. It's the age of the youngest whiskey that's put into the cask. So they can choose to put, this Aaron could have 25 year old Aaron and this Lefroy could have 30 year old Lefroy in it, but the numbers defined by the youngest whiskey added to the bottle. And remember, this is different to wine. Whiskey doesn't age in the bottle, whiskey ages in the cask. When Aaron has Aaron 18 on it, it's basically saying that this whiskey was in a barrel for 18 years at Aaron's distillery until the day it was bottled. And in the bottle, it's not gonna age anymore. This will stay an 18 year old um, for the next for whatever, 100 years, or to still be an 18 year old. So there's a thing about this, when there's no age statement. I'll just grab one. So here we go. This is the Glen Morangi Sultern. And as you'll notice, 
This has no age statement. But in Scotch law, the rules are that you can't call it whiskey unless it's been aged in oak for three years. So we know at minimum, this will be a three year old um, or older. So there's lots of reasons for people not including the age statements. Some people argue that it gives you more creativity. You know, sometimes you might want to have something 90% 25 year olds and you just want to top it up with some really young whiskey and they're worried that that will kind of turn customers off if they put a really low number on it. And there's a lot of whiskey lovers out there now that just think well you know be brave put an age statement on it even if it's a low number you know just chuck it on there because it tells us a little bit more about the whiskey. So we've got the Wild Turkey 101 which is a bourbon and this has the words Kentucky straight bourbon. Now if it's got the word straight on a bourbon, it means it's been aged for a minimum of two years. They don't have the same requirements um, as scotch that it has to be three years, but if it has the words bottled and bond, that's four years. Four years in an oak, virgin oak cask. So the next thing we're talking about is the capacity of a whiskey. There's a subtle difference between European whiskey and US whiskey. In Europe, generally it's going to be 70 cl or 70 millilitres. In the US, generally it's going to be 75 cl. And the reason for this goes back to history. It was a way they sort of divided up the gallons between the imperial units and the metric units. It's just sort of continued on today and it's just a little thing. It doesn't really matter, really. I guess you guys in the US get a little bit more whiskey in your bottle. It's pretty good. All right, just gonna move these bottles around again. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the type of cask that it's aged in. And there's a whole bunch of different casks that can be aged in these days. Whereas with bourbon, they age it in often virgin oak. And virgin oak just means that it's from a brand new barrel that's often just been charred and then they pour their spirit straight into a virgin oak barrel. But with scotch, they like to use used barrels. And two very common used barrels that they love to use from ex-bourbon barrels, so where bourbon's been aged in it, and then they empty it out, and then they send it to Scotland, and then they age the whiskey in the ex-bourbon barrel. And the other really common cask they like to age their whiskey in is ex-sherry butts. And sherry butts are a little bit bigger, they're big barrels, and I talk about all this in much more detail in my Whiskey Basics video, so go watch that if you want to learn a little bit more about the different types of whiskey casks. Yeah, with sherry it's kind of imparting flavours like dried fruit, red fruit and spice, and that's also very common within Scotch whiskey and a lot of other whiskies around the world at the moment. And then there's also whiskies that have wood finishes, and often you'll see this on the barrel, like this one here, which says, as I talked about before, the Sauterne cask finish, which is aged in ex-American oak bourbon casks and then finished in Sauterne casks from the French wine region of Bordeaux. And the thing about Sauterne is that it's a very sweet wine, kind of a dessert wine. It has like pineapple flavours and tropical flavours. And you can imagine then the sort of flavours the whiskey's then going to pick up in the barrel. But the thing about a finish is often a short amount of time. So often they will age it for quite a few years in like an ex bourbon barrel or something. And then just for the last little bit, they put it into a, a Sauterne cask and it just gives it that little twist. And just one quick note about casks as well. When they first put scotch into a used barrel, it's called the first fill. They'll empty that out and then they'll often put scotch in again and that's called a refill. So sometimes you'll see this on the bottle, it'll either be first fill, uh, which is the name of this channel. So there you go, that's where the name of this channel comes from. It's a pun, my name, pretty funny. So in this independent bottling bottle, you can see the words refill cask. This is aged in a refill barrel, which means that the barrel would have had a different scotch in it before, they entered that out and then they've put this into it. So the next thing is strength, and generally on bottles you'll often see a percentage. There's all sorts of strengths, generally uh, whiskey, especially scotch whiskey, has to be set at a minimum of 40% and then goes up from there. A lot of whiskey connoisseurs love it from 46% onwards. If you see the words car strength, like on this 
spring bank, the words car strength, this means that comes straight out of the barrel. They haven't added any water to it. So generally uh, whiskies get watered down a bit, but some whiskies go a lot higher than that as well, depending on all sorts of different conditions. And I've done a whole video about car strength whiskey. In the US, it will have often proof and proof is a little bit different. For example, the Wild Turkey 101, what the 101 is referring to is the proof. And a good way to work out the proof, it's double the ABV. So this here is 50.5% alcohol, times that by two, that's 101, that's 101 proof. It's just a different way of measuring the alcohol content. And often on US YouTube channels, I often talk about the proof. On basically other channels around the world, they'll talk about the ABV or the percentage of alcohol. So, so there you have it. That covers the basics of what you will find on a whiskey label. But as you go down that whiskey journey, as you learn more, you'll start to see some specific things, some bespoke things on some bottles. So let's talk about some of the more bespoke things that you won't see in every bottle, but you'll see in some of those bottles. So we talked about before about whiskey and whiskey with an E and Scotch whiskey and Japanese whiskey, but there are all sorts of whiskies from around the world now. So these could be your bourbon. Bourbon means it has to be from the US to be bourbon. Then there's Japanese, there's French whiskey, there's Swedish single malt now, there's Irish whiskey, Canadian whiskey, and now often there's actually quite a few English whiskies out now. And then within Scotch whiskey, you will often see the sub-regions, the sub-regions of Scotland. So with this Laphroaig, not only will it say just single malt whiskey, it will say Isla single malt whiskey. And then with island whiskies, they often talk about the isle it's from. So this will say at the bottom, Isle of Arran. And then with whiskies from Campbelltown, you'll get the words Campbelltown. And if you don't know what all this means, Campbelltown, Isla, Isle of Arran, all that sort of thing, go watch my video on whiskey regions in Scotland to get a better understanding of the sub-regions of Scotch whiskey. So the next thing I wanna talk about is independent bottlers. And these ones are very, very confusing. You're getting kind of to more the advanced stuff now. See with this one here, it has, the words Old Particular, but Old Particular are not a distillery, they're an independent bottler. Glen Caddam is the distillery, which is down the bottom here. So Old Particular, they've bought a cast from Glen Caddam, rebottled it at kind of the strength they want and you know, customized it how they want, and then resold it. So often you're getting really specific types of whiskey that are really unique and often a little bit rarer, or a little bit more harder to get than your general kind of distillery kind of mass bottlings you'll get from the shop. But go watch my video on independent bottlers if you wanna learn a little bit more about an independent bottler and you know whether or not you should buy them or why you would buy them. Now the next thing is non-chill filtered. Another thing I've already done a video on. So I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna leave a bunch of links below this video about all the different topics in more detail if you wanna go in more detail about any of these topics. But unchill filtered is quite common on a lot of whiskies these days. Uh, where it says either unchill filtered or non-chill filtered like this Aaron 18 year old. And the thing about non-chill filtered is it's about what hasn't happened to the whiskey. And what hasn't happened is it hasn't been chill filtered. And the reason they chill filter a whiskey is that often when you cool down a whiskey or you put ice in it, it often will go cloudy. And distilleries are often worried about what consumers will think if a whiskey goes cloudy. So to provide more clarity and to make the whiskey look nicer, they chill filter the whiskey. However, a lot of people think that it actually can take out some of the enzymes and some of the flavor molecules of the whiskey as well, which is why you get a lot of independent distilleries will kind of proclaim that they're non-chill filtered for so the whiskey lovers out there know that it's gonna be a max flavor whiskey. Now this is a debated topic. There's people on both sides about this. Natural color, and this is also on the Aaron. Natural color. So often what happens with whiskies is they'll add E150 colorant and that basically will make the whiskey go you know this kind of golden amber brown kind of color and it's a little bit deceptive because when we see colors like this we assume that that's from the cask and from the Aaron they've said natural color which means there hasn't had this E150 colorant added to it. So we know this is the actual color that the whiskey was when it came out of the cask. Whereas with whiskies that don't have the words natural color 
you know, we're never quite sure. And if you see a whiskey that's sort of really, really dark and it doesn't have the words natural color, you just gotta be a little bit skeptical. That's why often you'll see on whiskey bottles, natural color. So there you have it. Now you know how to read a whiskey label. And hopefully now you have a bit more confidence when you go into the whiskey shop and you can read it and go, oh, it's from Gambletown. Oh, it's 12 year old. Oh. Spring back. If you like the video, make sure you give it a like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring the bell. All those things help support the channel and it helps me create more videos to inform and entertain you in the future. But also as well, I've just started a whiskey shop. Go check out my whiskey shop. It's down in the description, it's on Etsy. Um, the distributor's based in the US. It's real cheap for anyone in the US to get it shipped to, but it also ships all around the world. So it's all things whiskey. There's whiskey t-shirts, there's whiskey hats, there's whiskey stickers, there's even like big photos you can get from different photos I've taken and stuff, all sorts of things, so go check that out as well. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy beauty.